Thank you. Welcome to the Improvement, Improvement Committee meeting. Uh, we'll start off with uh, the minutes from the last meeting. Uh, Councillor Wesley, anything to amend or add to the minutes you have put assignment? I'm happy with assignment, Chair. Apologies for absence. I have apologies for absence from Councillor um, uh, Councillor Robertson uh, and Councillor Amy Howard. We are here to do. Yes, we are just. I'm glad you're here. Two committee members. Is that all? Um, so that's apologies for absence, uh, declarations of members' interests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, no, turning to Arthur Bourne on the agenda. Um, thank you very much to Councillor Miller for attending tonight. Uh, Councillor Miller, I think, is going to give us a, an update on the local government organisation as it is at the moment. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for inviting me. I'm delighted to be here. I've done a very short presentation, mainly around the headings you asked me to feedback on, and also any other questions you wish to ask at the end. I'd be delighted to talk to those. So we'll just go through the, so the presentation really. So, so what do I do? Just go to... If you just respond, you just click announce and move to the next slide. Oh. Just move to the slide. Have you got... Yeah, if you just... <laughs> right, what do I click then? Right or left? Left. Thank you. <laughs> okay, right, that's where we're going. Right, okay, so the first point you wanted, Chairman, was to ask me about accountability and DDC delegates on the project board. I wasn't sure which project board you were referring to, because there are no project boards at the moment. We have an informal process at the moment where we have a, a we have a joint two second leaders meeting, which is every two weeks now. It has varied, but we have meet every two weeks, and that's about the collective. We also now have a north and west steering group, and we're meeting this to be meeting on Thursday, the west meeting on Thursday at Northampton Borough. So we have two sides now, so we have the west dealing with the western part of the, of the, of the county and the north dealing with the north. And the reason for that is because we may end up in different places, between north and west, but equally it's very important to have the overview of the joint meeting every two weeks, because this stuff affects both of us. So in terms of the accountability of all delegates, well, we are accountable in terms of feeding back information, because we have no decision-taking powers. So we do feedback, as you know, through updates. We had four updates up to the point the bid went in. We've had two updates so far on the local government reorganisation West. There'll be a third update coming out, which goes to all members. Um, I have been asked today by Catherine Lomax, would it be possible to um, distribute the minutes of the working group? We had a meeting last night. We had the biggest attendance last night. So, you know, we do invite every member to attend if you want to attend. They're very welcome to come along and contribute as well as listen. So that's, and Kevin was there last night, it's one of the um, members. He wasn't on the group, but, you know, came along. So I think that's quite encouraging, because we were saying to members, you know, you want to get involved, understand more, then please get involved. You know, so we're trying to be very open on this. And um, we also had the updates on Spotlight. Spotlight has a piece on the, the organisation update as well. So we're trying to be very open and transparent. But I think the key thing is on the on the joint strategic on this joint committee in terms of decision making. The thing about that is, of course, we, if we create a joint committee, of, say a formal committee, with say two or three members from each council, then that means any decisions taken at the moment have to come back to base. So one way of circumventing that is actually to have a committee which can take decisions on behalf of the you know, sovereign bodies. Now we're not there yet, even though we're quite keen to pursue that, because I think that's one way you get things done quicker. We do come back to council anyway if you need you know, if you need to take something back to council for a, for a, a steer on or a decision, then we have that process of that what I tell you? We can yeah. bring it back to council. But we don't want to keep creating extra council meetings. So in a sense, you know, we, if you know our, because we have actually been one of the ones saying that should be great to happen because things could happen quicker, some councils are more reluctant for different reasons. Not everyone, just one team, but two out of four actually in our case. And two two no, actually three actually, only one so one without mentioning the names actually not so keen on the idea. But we'll have to do that to try and get, make things move quicker. So that's just an option open. So I just hope that tells you about accountability at the moment we have no accountability other than to inform, mm -hmm. which I think we try and do our best on. Do you want me to take questions on each point or should we come back at the end, sir? Um, uh, no, I think if Councillor Wesley has any questions, to, oh, well, indeed. Okay. 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 
And now I think um, I think I'm going to It's probably best if we just uh, ask you about some when. So. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I'm happy with that. So the second point you asked me to look was ensuring transparency during the process, which I think you covered to a degree on that. Yeah, no. Just making sure we have four members and, and um, yeah, so I'll take, have to take any questions at that point unless. No, not I think um, when we put together the question set um, at that point in time, I don't think we'd seen the, um, the regular updates that have been coming through since. Okay, right. And so obviously we had two updates. Yeah. Uh, was it the beginning of this week or last week? I can't remember. We've had a couple of updates on the local re reorganisation West recently. There'll be a third one coming out soon. But before that, you had updates on the bidding process yes. before we put the bidding to govern. Yeah. There are four updates that you had. Yeah, I think um, Councillor Rich in particular was. Uh, keen to establish that uh, the, uh, the district council would have regular updates on uh, matters ongoing on the, on the organisation board and uh, yes. uh, from my perspective I've been forgetting those. Okay, that's fine. that's fine. So the next question was legacy issues including protection of damage district assets. Okay. My apologies. It's okay. Um, so that's your third question you asked me, and um, that's interesting actually because the assets we're particularly, you know, if you have a, a body that wants to take over a district council asset, what we're, what we're particularly interested in is those assets that have provided service. So if an asset provides a service, we'll have to talk to anybody about anybody taking over that particular asset, and if it provides a service. If it's just an asset, then we believe that's going to be unitary. Well, yeah, the, the assets will transfer into a new unitary as and when that's created. So I would say that the protection of damaging assets is really around those that provide a service, we have to talk to anybody that wants to potentially take over the service, which might include an asset. But those who just want an asset for the sake of an asset, we're not so keen on actually engaging on that basis, because we have a district-wide approach to assets generally that they should be part of a district no matter where they're situated now. There was the assets of private place in the town rather than the whole district. So we think it's important that we actually uh, protect the sovereignty of our district area on that basis. But I have to take further questions on that if there's any questions to ask. How are we going to look after staff during this period of time? Well, the truth is, of course, we can only look after staff to a certain degree. Now, what can happen is two things. One is, um, as you'd be aware, we've given our staff a pay increase recently, which has helped motivation. There's a reward, really, we're saying to staff, actually, compared to the other two local authorities, from the county council, on this part of the county, our staff, in terms of their levels, wasn't maybe the same level. So in a sense, we could we sort of address that to a degree. But the reality is, when it comes down to, as we move forward, there's two approaches we could have. If we can form a shadow body, say, next year, then during that shadow body period, we could actually then start to resolve some of the staff positions and how that's going to work. But, we, but I think that, that, to be fair, Chairman, at the moment, I think it's going to be a really big ask because it's not us behind the curve, it's the government behind the curve at the moment. And therefore, I think on the second point, we could have the big bang approach where everybody goes into the new unitary when the, the unitary is formed. And then obviously when, it, when all the staff go into the new unitary, then as would happen in any other sort of situation like that, there will be new terms and conditions, I'm sure, in a space of time, and then there'll be, yeah, then staff will get selected down that route. So we're not in a position to guarantee staff definitely any position in the unitary, but obviously ideally what would be best would be to set up a shadow body first and try and do it that route. But I think the reason that's unlikely at the moment is because the guns are behind on their curve of the timetable. So, um, I think that's hard, but we do value our staff and we want to make sure our staff are damaging, because that's our concern, are treated properly and therefore when opportunities arise on the new entry, obviously hopefully they'll be in a good position to take advantage of those positions as and when they occur. So I think if it's a big bang approach then all staff will feed into the unitary and then the unitary will then decide how many staff they need over time and those staff will be recruited probably for a different process and possibly on different terms and conditions. As would happen maybe in the private sector and take notes. That's right. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Is, so is that part of the ongoing discussions? That's part of the ongoing. Yeah, at the, well, so it's not. at the moment, it's yes, at the moment in this council, mm -hmm. uh, we, yeah, we've given ourselves a pay increase and we're actually saying to our staff, there's a staff briefing today actually, 
and staff are asking these questions quite naturally. I wasn't there, by the way, in my head, but it's, and therefore staff, it's the uncertainty is the killer. But obviously, you know, uh, staff will have the opportunity. I mean, I don't know your view, Tony, because obviously you're involved in this more now, but I would have thought the likelihood of shadow bodies being set up next year at the moment would appear a bit remote, certainly in the timetable of May, if you're talking about a year before the unitary. Because not because of us, because of the government's service. And therefore, I think that would be a better approach personally, that you would go into a shadow body and then maybe staff positions can be resolved over the year ahead. For failing that, uh, the, the other option is the big bag approach, which is everyone goes into the unitary. But equally, it's a possibility, of course, if the timetable slips further, we may, we may not have a unitary into 2021. Uh, so therefore, there's more time on that basis. Uh, yeah. okay. Firstly, my apologies for being stuck in the motorway. Um, I don't know if this is possible that it's been considered. I don't even know if it would be legal. But uh, given that there is going to need to be pain in moving to unitaries in terms of staff reductions and redundancies, is there some way in which there can be assurance that the pain is equally spread across the, uh, you know, across the three, um, you know, the three councils that will be that will be Western Thames. I can just see a deal. Well, plus the county council, of course, because mm -hmm. the county council. Well, I'm, 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 of course, the county council. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I, I, I can just see a danger that, you know, that if the if the new body is going to be based in Northampton, you will have a lot of staff who are based in Northampton. And I wouldn't want that to prejudice the chances for people who are working here in Daventry. Right. I, I get the question, Chairman. I get the question. But I mean, the answer is I can't provide that answer because actually at the moment, uh, all I say, I think the pain is shed equally because all staff and all the authorities are under risk. Uh, as we will we'll be next year, and certainly once we know the industry is going to proceed, because at the moment, of course, no decision has been taken formally, then all staff are at risk. I would say it's an equal pain there. Uh, I don't think the fact that it may, may be based in Northampton, I don't know what's going to happen about that yet. All I would say is that I, I and I'm sure the councillors here want to make sure our staff are treated equally with everyone else's staff. And, you know, I think that's important for all of us to try and make sure that happens. I can't answer further than that, King, because I don't know. So that's the honest answer. Um, the leader of Corby uh, District Council um, said this week that he expected, ne uh, what he was expecting, uh, the next stage of the consultation process to uh, to begin next week. Um, well, actually, it should have started two weeks ago. This is the government's consultation process. It should have started a couple of weeks ago. And they still have, they should be kicking off next week. It's meant to be this week. It should be next week now. So that would be helpful because that will finish then in January as things currently stand. And that's to anybody who wants to respond to it, actually. But obviously what it's not doing, though, it's not going to reduce the, the number of councils can't be changed. It's going to be based upon two unitaries. So people can come back with one or three unitaries. It's going to make no difference because that's not what the consultation is about. But it's about obviously feeding back any other thoughts, maybe like staff, and what I can mention about staff, what will happen to staff, how will staff be treated you know, fairly and equally, because I think that's very, very important. And of course, there are HR policies in place at all the local authorities, but that should be happening anyway, it's a matter of course. But I think that there will be, you know, eventually, there may be a bun fight for jobs, because clearly there won't be as many jobs as there are now between all four authorities, including the county. From, from my perspective, I think it's the uncertainty is, uh, is increasing uh, as time goes by. Uh, on Monday, I believe, um, uh, the minister responsible for local government reorganisation uh, told Peter Bowen, the local public banker, that he expected to make a statement reasonably shortly uh, with the words uh, that he used. Um, about what? Uh, about the forming of the unitaries. Oh, really? Um, what's the book that she was talking about? No, it wasn't. It was in uh, response to Peter Bowen's questioning. Oh, okay, right, okay. But, uh, do you have any idea when, we'll, uh, when we can expect a statement? Because initially we were thinking uh, September. So Time and, and, uh, well, see, initially that's right because initially the idea was in September the government issues its consultation because the minister can't be seen to preempt mm -hmm. the outcome of the consultation. 
So in a sense, it's got to wait now until the consultation is finished, as I understand it, before you actually move forward, before he decides what he wants to do. And therefore, that won't be until January or February now, as I understand it. So it's been delayed. Yeah, I met the, I think it was the Deputy Leader of South North Hampshire Council yesterday, and he, he was speaking about April. Uh, yeah, I think April is probably the closest to the time, actually, yes. So that's right. And of course, then the other point is about elections, which we had discussed last night on. Because elections actually, again, because we've got to prepare for elections next year, but clearly this, you know, but how can the Secretary of State take a decision on elections until he's taking a decision on the, um, on the means of the, um, of the, uh, his decision to move to unitary? Now, you may have seen, I did put a note out to the people yesterday in response to Ken's email about the Buckinghamshire outcome. And Buckinghamshire, he's managed to go for one unitary there. There's four district boroughs, one unitary. But if it's interested in that one, that's called a unitary district council, not a unitary county council, even though it's Buckinghamshire as a county. But secondly, it's also interesting to know that he's saying that. It's also interesting to know that. Um, in that they're saying about the elections, he's minded to postpone the elections in 2019. So the so basically, because I'm only for one year, which is along the same lines as Northamptonshire, because that's the reason why he wants to postpone the elections in 2019 on the 2020 timetable. So I suppose the question for us is, because at the moment we were reassured last week by the senior civil servant, we're still on track for 2020, even though some of us can see it's sort of getting pretty tight now. And therefore, it's 2020, there will, the elections will be postponed in 2019. And he's asking the district boroughs to ask for that postponement, because there's only district boroughs elections on place. And apart from us, which is by first, the rest of all out elections. But clearly, if it don't happen in 2020, there's a good chance those elections may still proceed. But it's been right to the wire, though. That's the point. We won't, probably won't know until maybe February, March, potentially. Which is a bit late for all of us in a sense, but uh, we have to work on what we've got. But it's pretty disappointing to come to actually, you know, we've been working very hard to keep up with the time there, but they're actually lagging behind, which makes it more difficult for us. Okay. Yes, there's any other questions actually. <laughs> yeah, just on this, I mean, it just seems, I mean, how much pressure, pressure's perhaps the wrong word, but, you know, we were, we were, sort of, I mean, we were sort of almost press ganging to where we are now. It was vital that everyone got on with it and yeah, we had to right. do it. And yeah. it's just like, yeah. take, it's a little bit, take it or leave it, and there's a consultation, and it's, it's got to be done because we've got to move on. And now, and now it's not. And, you know, well, it's so, moving on, but not as quickly as we wanted to move on. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's not moving on, isn't it? If you, if you see what I mean. Well, it's moving very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm just saying, what's the... You know what's the pr what's the push and the pressure like from this side to to either get it moving or to understand that it's not moving if you if you see what I mean. Well, that's made very clear. We make it very clear. Well, because there's it does seem a shocking jumble. There's, there's, uh, well, yeah, it might appear that way on the outside, but if you came on the inside and uh, now got two, we got uh, as you know from. The West Steering Group, we have three members from Dapshire now there. The, in the first meeting, it's first thing, the three members there. And on the main group, we now got two members from Dapshire, myself and one other. And that would be one of the two people who have been named, who will attend. And that's very helpful in terms of continuity. So I can't make a meeting like I did do the other week, and this briefing had to fill in, and this hadn't really been part of the process. So at least the two people there will have been part of the process. But I think the point you're really asking is, but we do put pressure on, we can assure you that. I'm meeting the commissioners tomorrow, so the commissioners are meeting tomorrow. I want to uh, lead them myself, commissioners the lady called Chrissy, who's their minder. And um, I know they met the approach leader, uh, leader last Friday, and they're meeting all the other leaders over the next few weeks. And I'll be asking some very pertinent questions here, because what they're saying is we have issues about the stabilisation plan, and I'll be raising that tomorrow when I see them, but we're still not convinced. The stabilisation plan is going to put the county council's financial position on the level level key by 2020 when the unitaries are meant to be formed. And that's part of their, they said all along, we want a clean slate start. And we're finding it very difficult to see how it can happen as things currently are. So I'll be raising those concerns tomorrow. And it's quite right we raise them, because unless we raise them, we're part of the problem also. I mean, I suppose what I'm driving at really is that, you know, in terms of, in 
terms of feedback to it because what what is their problem with delaying it? If you, you know what if, what is the what is the what's their problem by not doing it? Yeah, well, what's their problem in not getting on with it and doing it? I mean, what is the what is the minister and what are the civil servants doing? They insisted that it had to happen, and now they're saying, well, yeah, we've got to think about other things. Well, obviously, you know, that was almost obvious before they before they kicked this uh, kicked this all off as they did, and um, it, it just you know, I just think it'd be helpful for them to know, like, you know, what are they thinking of? Where where are the issues? Where are the problems? I mean, it would appear that. Sorry, to, um, That's right, sorry, it would appear they got all their ducks in a row because they put it all in place. If you see, you know, it's, and now it's like, oh, oh yeah, but I'm not sure about it now. Like, oh yeah, but what, but what if? Oh yeah, there's an, a, a consultation, a consultation to determine what we've sort of already determined and where it's going to go. I mean, it just seems, it just seems prevarication, and uh, we're not quite sure. <laughs> whether we really want to do it. Oh well, no, it's going to hurt. I mean, I want to reassure you on that for you, Chair. The, Mr. Rousel, that's the senior still said, made it very clear. As far as he's concerned, they're still on the track for 2020, as far as he's concerned. He said that only on Friday last week, and Thursday, Friday last week. So as far as they're concerned, they're on track. We obviously are pushing hard at our ranks. We're not so sure that is the case. Based upon the original timetable, it certainly isn't the case. But also what's happening there is, Mark, that we you know, like on the stabilisation plan, the seven borough leaders wrote to the Secretary of State, and we got a response back saying we don't believe this plan is going to work basically, and it's meant nice words it was. Yeah, yeah. And therefore that's also a problem, because obviously that's slowing things up a bit. But we're right to ask the question. Absolutely. If we don't think it's going to work, and we're going to get to that clean slate position, then we'd be remiss not to mention that. And we got a nice reply back, and I think that's sort of held things up a little bit. And I know that will be raised for me tomorrow, and I'll just raise the point again, you know, convince us this is going to work. Because we can't see how it can work in what you said so far. You know, if you're talking about the kind of council being in that sort of stable position by 2020, we don't think enough tough decisions have been taken on the plan. That's how we see it. But equally, they're saying they want to get more out of the districts and boroughs. I think they're asking about nine million, if I remember right. They've got nine million. They've got a line there, nine million or eleven million, eleven million. And no one seems to understand where that's coming from. And what we think the case will be, we can probably provide 1.7 million out of that 11 million. So therefore, so this is going to be a, a big hole there again. <laughs> and I'll be raising that tomorrow, though, because I'll be saying, you know, we want to deal with real figures, otherwise we're going back to the fantasy figures of the past, which got the county council and the mess it's in already. And remember, this council in particular went out there three times, three years running, saying this is where you're going. And they did nothing about it, and that's where they ended up. So, you know, we got kudos for that. You know, they, they've actually accepted the fact we, we were doing the right thing. But I can see them doing exactly the same thing again. It's like behaviour that's been changing. I was doing it very nicely tomorrow, but, but you know, we're a bit concerned. Yeah. So, you know, they, they, we, are, point, we yeah. are pushing that, Mark. We rest assured. We're not letting it go. Uh, um, I wonder why you're going to do it nicely tomorrow. Because I think you've got to you got to work with them. But don't worry, the point will get across. Yeah, that yeah. was my serious The point thing. will be put across. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> you know, Daventry um, supported the joint bid. Yes. I mean, that joint bid was for a move to two unitaries. Yes. Um, I can't remember the wording, but, but it, it was it was in a sense provisional. There are a number of things happening in terms of finance for the transition, in terms yeah, of... Yeah, we put four hours. Yeah, there, there, there are all these various yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd be interested to know if um, Chris has thought about what Daventry Council should do, or say, probably is more a case of what he should say rather than what she should do, and what it would want the, the, other, the other districts collectively to do. If we found that we were that we ended up with a you know with a proposal that didn't actually meet any of the us or didn't satisfactorily meet any of the things that we have said are actually required to to go ahead with this proposal. Okay, well, for you, Chair, can I just say that uh, the actual bid was put forward on the basis that the four us would be met. That's what the bid. Remember, that's how it's worded in the bid. That's what we put forward to government. 
Uh, I think the commission tomorrow will be speaking to the commissioners tomorrow because obviously well, the commissioners are only there to balance the county council books. They're not there to actually set up the unitaries. So I'll be making sure tomorrow when they ask me questions tomorrow, it's around the county council stabilisation plan, not about setting up unitaries. The stabilisation plan is very important for the for the sustainability of the unitaries when they're set up. Because unless the county gets its act together on its balances, then clearly that's going to put the two unitaries in a very poor position from day one. Um, going back to your point, Nick, Ken, I, I would say absolutely it's, a, it's incumbent upon us. If the borough, I mean, I spent to the borough leaders, we, we talk all the time, and we've been very strong on this because the borough leaders, I, I see the county council in a different position to us because their leader and their members are obviously under the control of the commissioners. They've been sent in to sort out their mess, which affects all us. But actually, it's about the taxpayers in Northamptonshire. And one of the things I find interesting, one of the things we have suggested is the council tax, not because I want it to go, because I'm part of the council tax pair. But if they're saying the county council level's too low, because it should have been gone up in the past, it hasn't gone up in the past, then why don't they have a hike next year to put the county council tax up level up to a level which would be more reasonable for what they're offering? Uh, but they seem to be reluctant to do that. So I'll be asking that question to one of the commissioners. Why are they so against putting the, their county council level up to a level which might be more sustainable, and that would be inherited by the two new bodies when they move when they move to 2020. So I, I don't know answer all your question there, can I? Because I'm trying to say it's trying to get the sustainability. That's why I'm focusing on it's about sustainability of the new bodies. That's what we're focusing on as addition to growth. I, 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 I mean, my, my you know my concern is that we might find ourselves in which we said that yeah we'll go on with this provided this happens. That's what, what we said. What, what comes back yeah, no, from no, the no. what comes back from the you know, from the Secretary of State or from his officials is look, yeah, yeah, we'll go, you know, that's the direction we're going in, but we are not going to meet your conditions. Now, you know, at the end of the day, they, you know, they dictate. They do, they do. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, right. that, that's the, the situation. Yeah. But whether, what, what, what position we take as a result, um, do we need to say, um, yes, sir, we will do our best? Or to be, or to be said something that is much more expressive of our feelings. I want to reassure your committee, Chairman, that uh, we've been quite strong on this actually, on this meeting behind those doors. Uh, we are, we want this to work. We want the unities to work. We recognise the challenges in Northampton at the moment. We know the county council is still finding stuff in their finances, which is coming out of Woodwork. So we recognise the difficulties. I think the commissioners found it surprising how bad it was when they arrived and they expected it to be as bad as it is. So we were realistic enough to know that if we come to say no more money and the county council's position became worse and they think they can take money out of the districts and boroughs, you know, 11 million, and we know they can probably get 1.7 million out of that route they're talking about under that heading, as I understand it. And clearly there's, there's some big gaps to fill. And you know, none of the boroughs have got a lot of money. But we haven't got a lot of money at Damage well, A lot of our money is committed already. So a lot of our money is committed to Damage So we haven't got lots of balances here that can fit into this hole. And if it did fit into the hole, that's all that we use for to fill a hole, nothing else. This is our taxpayers' money because we manage our affairs well. So I think it's very important uh, our citizens of Damage District get the benefit out of what we've done as best we can before we disappear. Because in the new unitary, that would be far harder, whichever party you're on. Northampton Borough see themselves as the main, you know, the parent grown up under the new unitary. And I have nothing against anyone there, but that's a worry. Because <laughs> they, you know, the way they run their affairs has not exactly uh, been brilliant over the recent years, or even before recent years. So I'm trying to say here, it's a difficult balancing act where we've got to try and persuade or influence if we can. But I have to say, I've got a fear, Chairman, that the government, has, uh, the government doesn't get down to its level of detail. As far as the Secretary of State is concerned, we have met him a few times. And Mr. Broken a very nice guy, and he's very capable. We've met him, I've met, obviously said it before. Uh, they're very capable because they're ministers at that level. They just want it to happen. So they leave it to their officials and they leave it to the councils to work through the detail to get the end result. And the end result they want is two unitaries. That's all they want. Which is why the consultation came out from the centre. Now, why that's been delayed, I have no idea why that's been delayed in the centre. It's, no, you know, it's meant to come out one week, then next week, next week. It's not come out yet. But obviously, from our point of view, we want it out as soon as possible. Because the quicker that's done, and the cons consultees will include Corby, who didn't agree with the bid, but then anyone can reply to it. So anyone, even ourselves, we can reply to it again, which was mentioned last night again, wasn't it? So anybody can reply to the consultation, the parish councils can, but it's not about the number of unitaries, it'd be any other aspect you want. 
relating to unit trees. And one of the things I think we should be asking the question is, how can we make these two new unit trees start off on the right footing? In other words, not burdened by deficits, or you know, the debt will follow them, the county debt will follow them, but you know, the deficits in particular on the revenue account. That's what we should be asking the question. I mean, the only reason this is the first time ever this has happened where the county councils failed. So any other example they use like Dorset or Dorset's the big one in which used Dorset, it's not the same as North Hampshire. And also Buckinghamshire, where they're just going to a single unitary, there's only four boroughs in four district boroughs in Buckinghamshire, all of whom oppose the single unitary. <laughs> but you know, I'm trying to say to you, so the government's made up its mind, it wants to go down this route. And I think, you know, we all realise they have the power. And the point we're saying is, well, we just want to let them know what we see as the facts. And we want to do our best to make sure we get the right result. That's all we're interested in. So all I'm interested in is making sure the two union trees have a decent start. And we can't go beyond that, because obviously who knows what's going to happen. But unless we have that decent start, I fear very much that the union trees will be you know, soon in trouble. Uh, is it realistic to ask that in the weekly work text that these members are receiving, yes. that we receive specific updates on the progress against the four asks? Um, yes, I could do that. I could do that. Some... So I think, I think that would be helpful because whilst the feeling in the chamber when you discussed uh, the joint bid um, was one of uh, acceptance or a bit reluctant to acceptance. Yes. It was very much contingent upon the four, four asks being yeah. met. I think yeah. that's important that we're kept when it falls on this. Through you, thank you. So I'd about to say the same thing actually, but you just said what could potentially happen is the four asks yeah. could not actually be given. That's true. That's what so, I was alluding to. Which is, and then we just go straight in. Yeah. But it would, we would just actually go into a unitary and end of story, and we'd yeah. have to sort it out ourselves. Yes. That the asks were there as to say we'd sign up for it on the basis of that's the right. four asks. That's right. I think yeah. that's what you said. Yes. Yeah. So, it, in a way, we'd be saying afterwards we we told you so for want of a better phrase. Well, I think that reason be right. No, yeah. but it's there for that. Yeah. Or for one of those. So I think it is important that we know that yes. if it's not going to happen on any one of the four, I think people should know that. Yes. I think the thing with the uh, one that uh, Councillor Wesley was talking about, I can't understand why there's not a timeline involved. There's a timeline. <laughs> well, <laughs> and it's been pushed back. Okay. The timeline of 2020 is still there, but the actual timeline well, the, the, of the process. The, the end yeah. date's there. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that that's happening. Yeah. So, whilst we could have things like, when is the consultation coming out? When is it going to finish? Date. Yeah. When is that? When is the second? Well, what's in place originally to go to see, and it's meant to finish in December. <laughs> that's not going to happen now because they delayed the well, start that, of the consultation. Right. It's going to January now. Okay, well, I've, I've perhaps have missed all of this because yeah. I've not actually seen a timeline as I would know it just through the 18 months, which tells you the dates you've got to hit to achieve something. Yeah. I've seen words, but I just want. I'm sure that people charts, do. Yeah, I've seen charts. And if Tony can help. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, there were charts included in the in the bid uh, process, but uh, what we're hearing since then is indicative timings that are coming from the civil servants. What we know is that the consultation has to take place. So the Secretary of State has received the, the uh, proposals, the bid, from the, um, the councils in Northamptonshire and part of his consideration is to consult on a wide, wider than the Northamptonshire authorities. So this is the consultation we're talking about. We're told that will either be a six or an eight week consultation. Um, but you can't start that clock until the consultation starts. Then, once the consultation has finished, some six or eight weeks after it started, the Secretary of State then is um, saying, or civil servants are saying, the Secretary of State needs time then to consider the consultation responses before he then is in a position to make a decision. And the decision then will be subject to parliamentary approval. So it's that decision that... Um, is you can't create a decision. Actually, before that, yeah. No, I, I thank you for that, Tony. And I, I, I guess I've, I've read it, so I must have seen it. Yeah. It's just I would like a nice big sheet of paper with it on. So mine is, well, that's what was planned. Yes. Where are we so many months after the date? I would suggest we know where near what 
the original timeline said. Mm. They're not there. Not and I don't us. think there's a published one to say where we are against the plan. Because all that's going to happen is this. That's what's happening. I know. <laughs> so my idea is, I think people should be should be, be able to see that and say, this consultation's gone back by whatever it is. Um, it's gone back by two months. Obviously. Two months. So uh, I think, if I may, it, it's, it's the government's timetable. It's not, it's not our timetable. It's not it's our timetable. Time. Time. It's the government's timetable. They're not hitting their own timetable. <laughs> and, and, no, and they haven't published a no. definitive timetable. They haven't done that. They're, they're for obvious giving <laughs> indicative, <laughs> indicative dates yeah. through the civil servants, yeah. and these dates are slipping. Can I just say on the four hours, Chairman? I'm not a very good position for the four hours. The stable, as I said, the, the stable start for the unitaries was clearly with major concerns there about the gas position, whether they've been positioned by 2020 to be in that stable position to feed into the two unitaries. So we're very concerned about that. We did talk about setting up a residual body to part the bad bank stuff. And the government said it's not possible, so that one's gone out the window. We've also, the cost of transition, we're now getting told, because that was to include redundancies you know, from one county council and from the boroughs, that has been told now there's no transitional funding, in the last words we've heard. The next one's about, you know, we made the point right from day one, the entry loan's not going to solve the problems, we made that point very clear. So we're talking about, you know, public sector reform in North Hampshire, including health and social care. We have made some progress on that, we got them around the table. We went down to London recently to have a senior meeting with senior civil servants from the Department of Education and the Department of Health. That's regarding adult social care for health and then obviously education for children's services. Children's services had just gone for an offstep, which was interesting timing, just came in a few weeks ago, and we're anticipating very bad news after the offstep of the County Council. And that, I think the civil servants are very keen to set trust up, children's trust up, to run children's services moving forward. So, and obviously the county council don't like that idea because they have no control over the spend. They give the money to the children's trust and the children trust then have to deliver the services. And if they need more money, they come back to the county because the county council is responsible as the unities will be when we take over those services. But clearly they have no control over spend necessarily. And then we've gone to viability uh, with supporting infrastructure. Well, as you know, we had a great bid in for the West, which has been put on, on hold. So at the moment, there's not a lot of good news on the arse, going back to your point, Ken. The, the clear problem we all have is that the county council position has put us all in a very invidious position in terms of sustainability moving forward. So something's got to give somewhere. Now I think the best thing we're doing is holding our line, because this is a negotiation at the end of the day, isn't it? And the government wants to blame the local area for the failure, which, yeah, they will do, they'll blame the county council, we can all say that's a fair point. And you can't reward success, it's always their um, great mantra. But a lot of districts and boroughs were successful, it wasn't just the county council, and those people have been penalised. So in a sense, the districts and boroughs, you know, even though it's the same taxpayers, so in a sense we have a slight imbalance between, I agree you can't penalise, you can't reward failure, and the county council failed very badly, but equally some of the districts and boroughs have performed well, but they're also caught up in the mess. So I think coming back to your point, Kevin, it's, it's a bit messy. And I think the point about the arse is, I can't see much coming forward at the moment, just going to support those arse. But what you said there yeah. is two out of the four are dead in the water. I think that's what I think, well, I think at the moment that's how it looks. Yeah. yeah. That's how it looks. Mine is, are people aware of that, that two out of the four are dead? Well, you've got to be a bit careful here, Kevin. You can't publicly say too much in your negotiation, because obviously behind the scenes we're pointing this out very strongly, and I'll be doing that tomorrow. Because obviously we're trying to negotiate a position, we get some more money into the system. And it's very difficult to do. If you go publicly on it, they're not clearly, you know, the, the, government, the government can do what it wants to do. They've got the money, they've got the capability to do what it wants to do. And there's no, no other county council that's in the, anywhere near the position that our county is in at the moment, even though there's one or two like Somerset, Lancashire, and Mitchell heading the same way. But they're not as bad as our county. So I think we've got to play the game right, because it is a game. But clearly, you know, our residents are not going to come up out of this very well, I don't think. And they will be paid more for less. It's always been my mantra, and I still see that's the case. And what we've got to do is be hold the line, hold our nerve, and ask for what we believe is right. So we're holding the line on the R still, but at the moment the information coming out isn't very promising. And the first one on the clean slate changed pretty quickly after we made the ask, because their idea of a clean slate wasn't our one. 
and that their, their idea of a clean slate is to make sure it wasn't about balancing the books, it was actually making sure, they, as they saw it, that uh, the clean slate wasn't having that clean start. It's more about uh, making sure the county council got its position, a decent position, but it wasn't a clean slate for the unitaries. So it's, bit, it's not very promising, Chairman, but I all want to preempt there's still a long way to go, but not that long, maybe. But I think I wouldn't be surprised if the elections, not the elections, if the actual unities are delayed by a year, because I think it's an awful lot to do. There's a huge amount of work going on for officers in the background. And um, I just think it's very important that we keep an eye on this. I, I guess it's a scrutiny function. I suggest you might want to keep an eye on this moving forward. Yeah. yeah. But I'll take the point you made about uh, feedback on the... I think give me feedback on the arse. Was it you wanted to... Um, yeah, sort of sim sim oh, updates against the four hours. So yeah, yeah, do that, yeah. Okay. Anything else from your point of view, Chair? Uh, no, thank you. No, that was uh, very informative. So thank you for... I'm trying to be honest about it. Yeah, you know, I wasn't trying to... So there's lots of good news at the moment. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> very mildly. Well, we're going to try and do our best to see if our tax best, try and do the best for our district. Yeah, yeah, and it's very frustrating because we actually are the strongest council of all the boroughs financially. So we're in the best position because we have years of good management here. So our, pe our penalty is we're going to suffer more than most. Just, just, I mean, just to get things balanced. Yes. Sorry, Chair. Okay. Yeah. Just to get things balanced. I mean, well, this, this shortfall is very much being requested from the, the boroughs and the districts to make it work. I mean, are we talking about large sale sell off of assets to actually to actually just not been discussed that because clearly it's sending out it's a one off, it's, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I'm just I mean, because obviously some of that is revenue generating yes, anyway. That's right, yes. saying, but it would I mean as far as the government is concerned, it's gonna sell everything off and then you're then you're clear. Oh thank you very much and walk away and uh, get on with it. In all honesty. Uh, Councillor Rosling, I think Councillor Longley is very consistent on, on this. Yes. You know, it's not a capital issue, no, it's, it's, it's a revenue issue. issue. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. simply not getting the funding in to, uh, to finance the services that by statute have to be provided by the County Council. Um, you know, so there's been a consistent and you know, long drawn out sale of assets at, uh, at the County Council level. Yeah, right. It's papered over certain cracks, yeah. but it hasn't by any means solved the problem. problem. Then, really. you know, the underlying problem, the structural and when, you, when you think of children's services, which are the highest in the country for child, then clearly there must be some room there to actually reduce the cost of children's services and still provide a decent service. So we are you know, the most expensive part of the country, and yet our council is the worst position in the country. So there's got to be a, yeah. a, a married up there somewhere where some savings can be doing. And also, the council Longley has consistently challenged the uh, stabilisation plan as well because he's not overall convinced either that it's going to do the job. Because we haven't got a long either, that's the other thing. Time is running out, and therefore time's an enemy. So I think what we're trying to do is highlight to government, because government, you know, the commissioners in particular come in to stabilise the finances of the county, not to set up the unitaries, even though there seems to be more and more of a crossover, and it's not their job to do that. Our job is to set up the unitaries. So we ask the commissioners to make sure the county council is stable, as best it can be, by 2020. Well, I don't want to worry, you've got a member of staff here and staff here, and tell anyone they're more than, you know, it's, just, yeah, it's a worrying time for people, but equally, you know, government can't allow it to fail either, I don't think, in the long term. I hope I don't have to eat those words at some point. And obviously, you know, I think the people of Northampton deserve better, and um, hopefully we can make it work. But I think we, we're trying to uh, also approach this in a positive way, because you can throw, you know, I mean, I don't get it wrong, Ken, I understand. I mean, I have to say, Tom Beattie Corby's been very good because you know, he's a Labour Council leader and he's been very responsible in discussions. But like all of us, he puts his point across in the right way to try and get an outcome that's going to benefit Northamptonshire as a whole. But it's not very really easy, so I'm probably see you again soon <laughs> when you want more information. But, uh, but please tell me anything you do need for you, Chair. It's really think that more information needs to come out. Because it's not formal at the moment, I think you've got to bear in mind the form it's informal. Before you came in, Ken, just saying what's here at the moment is informal. When it, if it comes to formal committee, then we have to discuss further about that. And you go down that route. The only benefit of the formal committee is it says you're going back to each base every time you want to take a decision. And then you've got to make sure the powers are right for that formal committee to work effectively. And each council would have to agree to delegate that. That's, that's, that's right, they do this. Thank you very much, Councillor. Okay. Do 
more welcome to stay if you want to. That's okay. Tell the corporate strategic plan. Oh, I don't know. 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 I don't know.
it's, 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 it's about the extent to which you, you actually have um, a process of community development of people getting involved in their areas. And it's as always struck me as rather a shame that community development centers around litter picking. Now, the litter picking that I have seen tends to involve, in any case, if, it is, if the numbers involved get into double figures, it's actually doing quite well. Um, perhaps there are places where I've seen in the Grange in the center where it might have got up to about 20 people coming out. But it, it's, you know, I wonder, I wonder whether the thing that we ought to be looking at is, is not simply um, the involvement of people in, in, you know, in very identifiable events, but something that somehow is much broader than that. I can accept that there's a sort of proxy for it, but does it, does it actually does it actually measure um, the things that we, you know, that we would like to measure? Which is going to be something about people's identification with the community, the extent to which they interact with the community, that you know, the links with a whole load of other things about the extent to which you know there is a supportive community that. You know, with all the talk that we have about you now about the importance of having the community to improve well-being and tackle loneliness and tackle um, antisocial behaviour and all these sorts of things. Um, I, 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 I haven't asked that as a very specific question, but it's more an area of concern. So, so sh should I just explain that, I mean, obviously the measure was agreed by the various processes two years ago. Um, it's not just about litter picking. Um, it's about uh, some of the things they've done in the past. They've done some really good action days where they try to get, you know, they get lots of different organisations and volunteers working together. So, for instance, it would include uh, the police, you know, antisocial, um, whatever they can do in terms of social services for antisocial behaviour, that sort of thing. Litter picking, we usually get Norse or whoever involved in terms of grounds maintenance so they can neaten up areas, cut back shrubs or whatever that might help prevent the litter. So it's a whole combination of, of organisations together. They've mentioned litter picking because that's what's happened, um, partly because of their limited resources at the minute. But they are days of they are days of action. There is, you know, lots and lots of um, contact going on with different community groups, and it's a little bit about uh, what they try to do. A lot of it's about encouraging the, the the community to have pride in its own area. So we do a day, try, you know, well, they try and get it up to good speed. Some of the things we've done is we've changed play equipment or we've put CCTV cameras in or we've we've put in um, dragon's teeth to stop, you know, people getting on the areas and things. So, so it had, you know, it, had, it is far, far broader than litter picking. I just think, unfortunately, litter picking has been the one that's been quite easy for them to do without some of their other staff resources in place. So, um, you know, it, it is, um, there, are, there is lots of good work that goes on and I think, to be honest, just about everybody in the council kind of interacts with volunteers going out there, at, at the, you know, at, at some point. There's a lot of good work going on currently at the Country Park with the Friends Group, we've redeveloped that with the change to Norse and we've got the right ranges in that are really willing to, you know, enhance that. So th there is a lot of good work going on there and it is much, much broader than, than litter picking. But remember, you know, it does have to be what can we actually measure and to try and measure every single contact or how we engage with the community. It's not, not that simple. Anything further? Uh, yeah, that's not further. Yeah, that's, thanks, Chair. Yeah, just sort of reinforce that. I mean, you see the name Brixworth up there twice. And there's groups that go out and do that. And I think the last one I went to, there was something like 60 people. Saturday afternoon, um, which was you know quite astounding. Also, uh, the things to do like the guides and scouts they needed for badges to things like to get those, and also uh, we put uh, flower trays if that's the right word where it says welcome to Brixworth, and the youngsters got involved in actually saying what sort of flowers 
plans should go in there and someone help them along with that. So I think it's broader than just that. But it it works because it's also education. So it's, it's the usual thing, isn't it, Ken? Where if you can stop it happening, <laughs> it's better than solving it, shall we say. Thanks, Jen. Uh, anything further to report to you? Well, well no, I've, I've only got the one red. So, I, I, you know, and I, I will stress that our very last measure, which is um, corporate plan achieved, uh, we, we're at 93% of uh, achieving our corporate plan, which um, is, is really, really good news. Uh, any, we can go positive if, if we like. Uh, any other little highlights? Uh, well, I guess I should mention yeah. this one. I, I, did, I did debate about mentioning this one. Um, but, but the one that's always been in the red, I've got to find it now, that has been my own good old target of um, the amount of residual waste we collect. Oh, yes. And I'm really, really pleased to say I'm now in the green, because it is mine, I take it very personally. Um, and and I, I was just saying to, to uh, Chris earlier, the change in the um, style of the waste service has already had tremendous results uh, in terms of driving down the amount of residual waste, uh, driving up recycling, uh, driving up food waste, uh, less litter, um, the amount of actual garden waste subscriptions we've had subscribed. So, you know, it's um, actually it's E2.1, now I've found it. So, you know, I, I think it is a positive story and um, actually I got invited to um, to Larrick a couple of weeks ago to actually talk about what we'd done and, and you know we were the kind of the the, the um, district leader in terms of going to that one two three service and, and they were so impressed with it was you know it was a big big ask and yeah there's been a few issues but you know what we actually fundamentally apart from cost we want to reduce waste and we want to improve recycling and certainly our, our early figures um, and you know I've, I've put some figures up there but uh, food tonnage has increased by 28%, dry recycling by 8%, uh, approximately 50%, 6% of households have signed up to garden waste. And, you know, and again I said earlier whereas I really expected to have quite a lot of complaints about the policy it's been very well received and, and people have accepted this is what we need to do. And you know, to go off what Chris said about us managing our budget, this is one very positive step we've taken. And you know, I, I think that kind of those figures in terms of how, has it been successful in terms of what we do? Well, absolutely. Sounds like really good news, and actually, it is worth finding out where things are going right as well as. Well, well I do, you know, they're early figures, and, and hopefully, you know, at the minute I'm only really comparing three or four months, and, and two of the months in there are obviously Amy figures, so really, if you took those out, the percentage increases would be a lot better. Absolutely. Yeah, can I just, I, I think really, really pleasing to say you have, I think you've taken a lot of stick in this room over <laughs> the last year. <laughs> That's why I thought I'd mention that one. <laughs> no, well, I think, and all due credit, because, you know, credit where credit is due, you know, it's been put in place and it works and there's been a lot there's a lot been a lot dished out over this and sometimes it's been really really hard for you and it's been difficult and I think it must be really really nice to see to see that coming through with a good result so congratulations. Well, actually I'll re-emphasize that because you know as a ward member I've seen complaints coming into me you know when there were just the initial TV problems that you would expect with any new service and the way in which the council and officers in particular Julie have responded was spot on and they've been out so yeah well done everyone. thank you so um just one question i would raise i don't think it's on the strategic plan but it may be something to look at moving forward if there is an opportunity um i know the main area of concern around uh, the move to north and the change to the 123 and 321 uh, collection service was um the potential for an increase in fly tipping do we have any data on that i, I do actually and it's it's good news and bad news Fly tipping is increasing, it's increasing all over the country, uh, but the type of fly tipping, because when I first looked at it I thought, oh, you know, that's a real worry, and I am monitoring it with all my figures, but the type of fly tipping is not domestic, domestic fly tipping. Um, so, you know, have we have seen more um, domestic waste, rubbish bags or whatever, but no, it's tyres, industrial waste, builders waste, commercial type waste. 
Um, not, you know, so yes, it is increasing, but I can hand on heart say it's not because we've changed our waste service. It, it's a type of uh, fly tipping somewhere. that's going on. And I, actually, I had a, a Freedom of Information request through today to say, what are you doing to reduce fly tipping? Well, it's a bit like, what are you doing to reduce litter? You know, creating some of this community pride in areas, but if people are going to do it, it's, you know, and, and enforcement's difficult. It's difficult to catch, it's difficult to prosecute. I mean, again, if we can prevent, it's easier. So, just, just on that point, I think the one thing I've noticed is it's becoming a tendency for people to drop litter bags by rubbish bins around uh, around the town. I don't know whether anyone else has noticed this, uh, noticed this in our areas, um, which sort of suggests to me is because their bins are full up or whatever. But on the plus side of that, the most people are actually picking them up now, whereas yeah. before they yeah. were sort of just yeah. being kicked to uh, sort of kick down the road a little yeah. bit or into the into I the mean, it's, it's early days of them establishing, because one of the things we're also looking at is which bins are being used a lot and which aren't, and if they're not being used, can we move them or take them away and put them somewhere else? And if they are being used a lot, they, they need to sort out their frequency of schedules. But it was information we didn't really have before, and they're trying to kind of, you, you know, it's going to take a year to establish some of those patterns. Um, and we welcome feedback if people know of particular bins that are always overflowing and really, really heavily used, then please let us know. Thank you very much. Um, item 6, uh, runs the rolling work programme, so, uh, Councillor Busley, and um, you've had an interim report. So. Well, um, I've been put in the, the initial words, we were, we were running in the court um, and uh, we were, myself and Councillor Richie were actually struggling to um, um, get the report, which is yeah. not <laughs> Information, uh, to get information and um, get information out of uh, various people. So people in this building were okay. It was just a little bit more difficult to get hold of uh, uh, police and uh, county, etc. etc. But um, I think we're actually moving on now. So there was this initial report. Councillor Ritchie myself also had a meeting last week and Councillor Ritchie came up with a bunch of green some more information and put some good words together. Um, I don't know whether you picked up, I said that actually yeah. out last night, as, uh, as in, did you pick that up? Yeah. I did, yes. Yeah. Um, I think Ken probably might have a few words around that, because if there wasn't another smart idea, but I just tried to put everything more into a, more into a, and you know, just a bit of added information in there. And I think, um, you know, I think what we, I'm honest, what we did, we felt we were chasing our tails around in circles a little bit to see where we could get to on this, and we were rather keen that we, we did come to some sort of, looking forward to get some sort of conclusion. I think we've sort of got some ideas in there. I think it's a bit more of an idea just to run past um, everyone, in, everyone here to see where they thought we were on the right uh, routes and um, in the same way. This, this particular um, task was going to be the one that could be simply done in a, you know, a single bit of investigation and report because it, it, it brings together a whole lot of different things. Um, uh, in many of the cases, 
there are no, there are no obvious answers. There are things that have got to be matters of judgment about what is going to make sense in terms of pleasing most people without, um, without upsetting too many in terms of what we propose for, you know, for parking. And it strikes me too that there are so many, you know, there are so many great areas, the various where there is either the driver laws or the potential for bylaws, but on the other hand, uh, as a sort of sense that well, perhaps we, um, you know, we get by and then um, we'll let people work out their own solutions in their own areas, and we, you know, we don't get too involved in that. I mean, you know. For any instances, will that maybe be, you know, be the only practical approach? But the other th the thing you would then come up against is that we're dealing with issues that are most of which are probably in the hands of the county council. Um, the county council, um, when many takes the view that well. Um, it's, you know, it has got other things to worry about. Even in better times, it would have got other things to worry about than parking in particular down tree estates. Um, now, um, you know, the chances of getting it to, 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 to act with resources is, um, it seems to be extremely slim. But whether they are prepared to let the district council, if the district council were in a position to do something, and actually funding work that would normally be the, you know, be the county council's responsibility. You know, hopefully in 18 months or perhaps two and a half years, if, um, if our leader is correct, um, this is all kind of the same single thought. But that, 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 that has made it a little bit difficult too. I, um, I feel not expect that um, Councillor Wesley may do the same, that on many issues we're up against thinking, well, you know, I think on balance um, this makes sense, but uh, perhaps this is not the best way of doing it. And I definitely wonder whether, I wonder whether there's a way of having a, 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 a sort of brainstorming session um, of those who are interested to try to go through the issues and see, you know, and see what we, you know, where opinion lay on different issues and whether, you know, whether indeed the wishes that we, you know, that we, haven't looked at, that we should have looked at, or the local solutions that we haven't actually thought about. Um, when it comes to uh, a, you know, presentation actually within within this committee, time of course is limited. Um, it has got to be centred on a report with recommendations that will be taken as formal decisions. But an opportunity that can be you know much more open discussion. And I, 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 I don't know if that would be useful. Uh, I don't know if it would be possible. Um, as, as the chairman, my, my thoughts would be that you know, this is very much a, a Daventry Town um, issue. It, it might be helpful if you um, managed to convene at least one board member for, from each of the four Daventry boards and you know, had a brainstorming session that way. My other thought is that having um, heard a, a presentation on the issue of uh, to a PCSA for a rural area last night at the parish council meeting. Um, I, I learned that uh, PCSOs can assist in uh, enforcement of traffic issues. So it may be worth um, uh, just uh, you know, getting a PCSO along to a meeting and you know, mm -hmm. just talking about you know, what involvement they'd be comfortable with. Mm -hmm. and then, uh, it's for me, there's, there's a lot of things that, that don't work with Tony Boy Bunny up on this as well. This doesn't come under our remit, basically, in the red tail, so I'm confirming that the early doors are within these processes. It's only slightly bad, but having said that, there are some things we can do. So, you know, as, as this, uh, as this um, the these men said yesterday, you've got, different, you've got different aspects of different things going on in different places, and then some mix, uh, some mix uh, of, of, of 
of other issues. And I would just say, having gone through it again last night, I think some of these do not just apply to Donald Trump, these are also applicable and movable out to, out to other areas. Now, you may not have, um, you may not have say, the major problems, but I would imagine in, in many, many villages around the district, there is one street, one road, one corner that causes outside the shop, outside the pub, outside the village or church, wherever it may be, that, is, that causes issues and there may be remedies, may be remedies again. And for me, just on these, on these notes that I put out yesterday, I think there is some things that we can do in terms of information. I think, I think actually just explaining, um, explaining the rules to people is important. Maybe put that out to the parishes. These, this, is what, this is what the rules are with parking. This is what we can and can't do. This is what we can think of. We, talk, we actually just heard a piece about community action, didn't we, about um, interaction between parishes and uh, parishes and uh, districts and community groups, etc. You know, um, consider of parking might be uh, across might be across districts and um, think that we could actually put in place as, a, as an interactive path. You know, we could actually put that as a function to the um, department and say, shall we put that forward, um, produce you know, some, maybe some money involved in that, produce a leaflet with the rules and the regs, and then just contact the forms of what is wrong and why, and why we shouldn't park on the street and why we've got fire uh, We also have the, the safety aspect of it, which I think is really, really important, and, and obviously a concern to the emergency services. They sort of, as far as I understand from Kevin Fagan, they pretty much look after that for themselves, although they do rely on, on information from people wanting to help until, obviously until the fire engine turns up, because they can't get down the street, so there's a certain amount of feedback and information on that. But I do think it's important that, um, for instance, I know that uh, one of my fellow town councillors is in fact going to work on parking around the town and, um, and again, that comes back to I know the road jump do the leafleting campaigns and dangerous parking. But those things could be combined with considerable parking, dangerous parking, and the consequences of it. Because there are aspects to do. But otherwise, really what we're asking is that there's possibly money being spent in conjunction with NCC and CC highways. And that in my view, that probably needs more officer work to actually pummel that out to get a, a, a workable thing. Now, obviously, that's resource, etc. Et so, et I think it's, although we are scrutiny improvement, that is quite difficult to put forward into a thing which comes back to Council Rich's point about maybe one of the recommendations is, is, um, is, a, little, is a little brainstorming group to actually decide on a, on a bit more sort of policy. To, to policy to make public to policy to decide policy. Um, do you think the current position of highways at NCC is that in terms of extra projects, extra work uh, that they are asked to do, um, they will do the work if the funding uh, is provided? Mm -hmm. uh, Count, uh, parish councils, um, I know, have requested additional road safety measures. They've been told that if you put up the funding, we will do the work. But uh, obviously, the, uh, the cost of these um, uh, projects is, is very cheap. But you know, I think getting um, you know, getting even partial funding from NCC Highways is going to be uh, not impossible in certain circumstances. <laughs> so actually, the only thing I'd say on that is that if you don't try it, you don't you don't get it. And, and you may, and obviously we're going to, we are probably going to want to move to authority. And if, uh, if the thought process and words are in there initially, maybe just maybe that that happens. I don't think, you know, I think there is a frustration in this because there are solutions, but it is about partly spending, it's partly spending money and partly doing that. Even some of the steps that we're doing here, you also see, you can also see, major, you can also see issues with it. If you can get every person in the street to say, yes, I'm going to have a drop curb, and yes, I'm going to, and we're going to do this, and it's fine. But if, if, um, if it's only every, every other third person and everyone else takes advantage of other people's uh, goodwill and, um, and monetary spend, then you can see a certain amount of 
conflict as they uh, as, as people don't spend money take up the extra parking spaces, um, etc. etc. It's also difficult to sort of say if you like the bulk buying process, how do you get everyone on board but within that period to actually come up with the cash, actually sign up to have some sort of contract um, and actually agree to get them done. So I think I think really what we're saying is that we've we've managed to glean out a certain information. There's been a few black lists in attention to future housing which have been around to the streets council which you know that uh, couldn't get any couldn't get any uh, sort of cooperation from them and what on their thoughts and what they want to do around the around the uh, states and dormitory. So if you don't get that you can't you can't actually move forward. So it's a little bit like as we're sitting here, um, any sort of office of you, and then you give yourself a background and how we actually just do the time and what you think as far as recommendations go. And if those recommendations, recommendations aren't spending, then you can now mop up or mind the spending on the team and go and find a cooperation project. And then so be it. Um, but um, those are the ones that I do think are quite important. Uh, and we also put things in the box for people to understand. Maybe, just maybe, one of the advantages of the tree um, is, is more clarity about who does what. And uh, I think one of the issues at the moment is the, um, is the, the multiplicity of, uh, of people in you know, part of the district council car parks and things like that. No real parking controls around the estates, etc. etc. So it's not this, it's not this, but it's not this, 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 does some really good work um, uh, on this to date, and I'm sure between the two of you, you'll um, come and you come to some big positive. Yeah, I mean, it's the staff are good. I mean, sort of, is, is everyone happy about the routes we're going? I mean, there's some sort of. Yeah. I think, well, obviously, this is this is not a presented paper because it's absolutely it's not on time, but does everyone agree that those are the sorts of things we do, or should we be throwing some of those sort of suggested recommendations out at this point? Maybe just get the winners um, annotated and um, thought annotated tools. No, I, I think they will, uh, they will probably be positive. You know, uh, I see what you're saying about people liking that it's not within our remit. But yeah. then, you know, this council has a, a positive track record of going with this remit, and particularly regarding the, you know, the educational side of things, putting together something for parishes or you know, community groups to you know, then go and educate their communities. Yeah, we're positive, so I have no issues with what we've uh, brought to us in draft form. Um, are you looking at me? Well, I think you sometimes tell me something. <laughs> well, I, I, I think it is, uh, I mean, you're, you're developing your, your sort of um, proposals and recommendations, and it's not for officers to, no, to no, no, try, no. try and vet it out. So that's, that's why I'm, I'm yeah. keeping quiet. I, I think, I mean, what I would say, I think your know, council, council Rich, you mentioned um, <clears throat> the possibility of doing some sort of workshop brainstorming session which might help um, get some sense from others uh, of what they feel about the uh, recommendations you, you appear to be heading towards. That seems to be a sensible idea. Um, the only other thing I would say is really about process and timescales, um, that um, you, you need to draw this to conclusion at some stage. Um, our next meeting is February. First week of February. Yeah, so... Um, okay. Okay, well, this means that we'll, we'll commit to either to, to, to some sort of physical brainstorming or yeah. we'll get this, we'll get this out and actually ask, uh, actually ask for responses on, on, on difficulties on that. And then on the basis of that, we'll put together for the report and the next few years. I think we are, I think we are pretty much, I think we are pretty much at the end of what we can. I think we've got enough in there what we can do. Bits, little bits of added information maybe on just to tie up costs, etc. I'm not going to do that.
Excellent. And um, just for clarity, then, Tony, uh, with the meeting being at the start of February, when does that make the submission deadlines look to not just confirm? Really want them early in, in January, I think, to, to give it time to. End of year. So, mm -hmm. yeah. first week of January. I, I, I would suggest, I mean, that gives a chance for uh, management to have a look at it, feedback to you, and you to consider what, whatever we have to say. I'm thinking maybe then. Under 27 voluntary services support. Um, this was deferred, wasn't it? And uh, who took it on originally? I think it was Council of Pritchard. Council of Pritchard originally, and um, I think as he's left the committee, it was needed a decision on whether you were to reassign it or to um, actually kill it off. Yeah, um, thinking it through, uh, thinking it through my own head, we've got uh, Councillor, um, Councillor Howard has her own uh, scoping document now, which uh, she's proceeding with. Uh, Councillor Wilson is obviously um, busy with his. Um, Councillor Turner is helping in a num on a number of matters. Um, may, I, may I suggest to you that we uh, defer it again? Uh, and we may, we may be in a better position to decide in, in February as to the effects of one, if anybody. Um, um, if, we, if we did get something going in February, uh, it may report in time to, you know, to influence the way that we deal with voluntary organisations, that will be a decision taken sometime in 2019. And we would therefore be making a recommendation for what happens in 2020 onwards, which may not be terribly useful. But on the other hand, but on the other hand, um, I see that one of the you know one of one of the challenges at the moment is what we can what we can do to to protect services and communities here within you know within Dublin district when that change comes up. And from that point of view, having a solid bit of work that mapped out um, what were the what were the perceived needs, um, what was actually happening within the district was something that could be quite valuable when it came to negotiation within a new unitary council. Do we have a scoping document? Yeah, the, the scoping document was approved in um, April, April this year. Um, of a mind to, uh, to take this on uh, myself uh, if I can find some support from elsewhere within, within the council, because I think it is a valuable piece of work. Um, and actually on, on that on that note, um, actually, I, I will in fact uh, commit to providing a, a verbal update to the committee in, in February uh, on uh, you know, outline uh, investigations that I've undertaken. So I'll, I'll take that on with the committee's agreement. Chair's going to sign to the yeah, absolutely. You know, I'd, I'd just like to you know, see some progress on it, so I'll, I'll do it myself, which leads nicely on to assignment 28, which is the TDEP properties. Uh, now, the good news on this is that investigations and work is, uh, has been completed uh, with uh, assistance from uh, senior officers. Um, the, the difficulty we have is that we now have two uh, very consistent and I believe very honest um, uh, versions of events, but two which it is very difficult to uh, to marry, uh, to, uh, to to reconcile uh, with each other. Um, 
So whilst we have, uh, whilst I, well, I, say I we, Councillor Ritchie and I, uh, have completed work and completed investigations, uh, the final recommendations uh, need to be uh, established and uh, I simply ask Councillor Ritchie if we can commit to uh, having a face-to-face -face meeting in private within the next uh, two weeks yeah. at some point um, and then I'll, I'll bring along my draft final report for you to look over and we can debate and discuss and we'll submit to senior management. Um, uh, I'd like to get it uh, in front of the SMT um, by the start of December, uh, really, so that it can be properly digested. And uh, whilst I could have rushed the uh, rushed the report and you know, publicised it, um, I thought it's better than that. <laughs> and, um, you know, this needs proper uh, digestion uh, internally uh, before before we uh, come to final conclusions. So uh, I just emphasise that you know, the work, you know, the investigations are complete, um, but the the evidence uh, is difficult to, to reconcile, so that, that's where we are with it, and I decided to share with you, it's really, really good news, and I don't think you would expect it to be easy to do that. No, I mean, it's, we have not. I've got a bit of a problem, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's what I was saying, I'm just saying, if you've got the, the information, you need to come up and say, thank you so much about it. Okay, um, if we're happy there, then we move on to uh, Councillor Howard's uh, scoping document which she's uh, submitted. Uh, she's very disappointed that she can't be here tonight, but uh, unfortunately she's been uh, taken unwell, so I wish her the best. Um, are there any comments from either of my colleagues in the committee? Um, and I know uh, the Councillor Howard's worked closely with uh, Maria Taylor and, uh, uh, and Councillor Hills uh, to um, conclude this uh, scoping document. I think she's taken on quite a significant amount of feedback in, in tweaking it and um, coming to the, uh, the final version. Um, and she's, uh, she's been particularly um, well, she's persevered greatly in getting uh, People onto the task panel and uh, getting there. I was going to say, it's, um, it's, um, it's a very sort of um, very complex process when you get them in the space that they can go to actually assist them or something. I think it's a very nice No, no, this is, um, I think it's an issue that is always relevant, uh, no matter what laws we represent, it's an uh, antisocial behaviour. Uh, isn't solely an urban issue, it's prevalent unfortunately in, in, in many villages as well. And um, uh, if Councillor Howard is here, I wish you the best of luck. And I'm sure she'll do a great job. Uh, any comments from, from you, Tony? Uh, I, I think, Chairman, I mean, I've actually seen a, a, an early draft of this, yeah. and, and so I'm, I'm fairly comfortable with this. The, the, the only observation I would make is that the task due completion date, task milestone dates are, are not completed, and I can understand why it wouldn't necessarily be at this stage but just in terms of trying to move things on, um, whether that's something you want to think about or...? Um, do we have an April meeting or is it...? Um, yes. Because we agree, um, after the council next year and the next cycle we'll have six. So yes. we will have number five that we've had yeah, previously. Second April. Second April. So, um, is it reasonable to put in a, um, a, a, a an estimated completion date for that <laughs> lead task panel member? Chair, I mean, it, it gives us a structure, doesn't it? I mean, so, I mean, please come and listen to see what this kind of thing is. It gives it, it a target and a structure. But, you know, yeah, um, I think it's better to have it done in the middle of the day. So if we put task due completion day to meeting of 2nd of April. And key task milestone dates, um, a verbal update uh, or, an, uh, or an interim report you know, for January.
also on 30 uh, review of DBC North Joint Venture. Um, I haven't received a scope and document from Council Lord Dutton, have you? I've not seen those until then. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll mark that down as pending and I will establish where he's up to with that. Um, yeah, no, sorry, yes, Councillor. I, I, I wonder, Chair, is there a way in which we can, we can move faster? Um, I, think, um, I mean, this, you know, this, 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 is, this is one of these issues that its importance is during the first, particularly during the first half year of the North's contract, certainly during the first year of the North's contract. But because we don't have another meeting for about four months, um, it's a very, very long time before work begins. But I assume that, you know, that there's an inquiry as a person. I see being able to produce something which you might do. But it would be a shame if you were able to produce something next week for it to sit around for four months before any work started. And I wonder if there's a way in which in which um, uh, that, that there can always be a delegated decision power given to the chair to give a provisional go ahead on the basis of a scoping document before that scoping document has been formally ratified by the committee. And um, Tony is holding his hands. Yeah, I think if I may, Chair, I, I think there's nothing to stop you doing that. And um, I, I, you know, I would um, um, suggest it's a good idea, actually, you know, for the very reasons Councillor Richie suggested. I would think, uh, I mean, given that there isn't a scoping document, you know, the committee on that side of a scoping document, nor is management, I think, if a, a scoping document could be circulated and um, agreed in principle um, to be endorsed at the next meeting of the committee. I know, I, I was liaising with Councillor and um, immediately, immediately prior to, uh, to our last meeting uh, with a view to assisting him in getting his open document completed. Um, I'll, obviously I'll follow up uh, with him on that and uh, uh, see where he's got to. And all I would add is that I don't see any reason why you know, initial groundwork, initial investigations can't start before the scoping documents are uh, approved. You know, yes, you may you know, misdirect your energies to a certain extent, um, but I can't see how you can go too wildly wrong. Um, so I see, I see no reason my work can't be ongoing. And um, yes, uh, thank you for your suggestion of um, getting a uh, scoping document approved. And, um, I think the, uh, the two headline that I've set um, ourselves for completing the uh, TDEC matter uh, is an appropriate deadline for uh, Council Robertson to get us working up and together so on uh, the committee's approved the law. I think that's true. I think that's fair enough. Um, as, as, uh, as Tony said, so there's no reason why um, on the ground, some of the groundwork can be some of it may be, but it's something that you may need to probably some of the questions as a development of the uh, as the scope of the project to make sure the funds are very, very important. Yeah. Okay, so scope of the document So, um, item seven, uh, which I think is your section. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'm just going to run through the, the action plans. Um, the first one is um, Simon 16, Customer Satisfaction. Um, that's not completed. Um, the time scale we've pushed back from, it was due in November this month, um, we pushed it back until December, um, really on the, the reason for that's in the final sentence of the, uh, the comment there, about uh, waiting for the call volumes to fall back to a reasonable level before we introduce that. So it is, um, um, should be uh, completed well in time for the next meeting. On then to assignment 17, um, the anti commercial property. Um, it's an update to um, commentary on um, recommendations to two and, and three. Um, there's ongoing work there. Um, I think you know, the key point is the, um, uh, the shop front grant scheme where we've now got 10 um, applications coming from that. Um, may I ask about that, Tony? Um, 
I don't know much about the grant scheme. Um, are there strict eligibility criteria? Is there something to prevent the likes of, the, say, Costa Coffee and Sports Direct from uh, being in the grants? There, there will be some criteria, eligibility criteria. I don't know the detail myself, but so, uh, you know, I would expect uh, businesses in that size to you know, sort of be sorting themselves out. So. Intensely. Yes, I, I, I find, you know, my not shows that it was uh, our last meeting, there was only three, yeah, it was good, so, so um, the, the words got, got out there and um, it, it's more, more interesting. Um, then on to assignment 19, other needs of fitness and well-being met in the rural areas. Um, there is just the, the one outstanding recommendation that's um, it's been sat like that for some time. We're 2020, um, this is going to be subject to unitary, perhaps. Um, so, yeah, no, no change to report that. Um, Assignment 20, DDC and Parish Town Council Corporation of Major Planning Applications. And again, we just want uh, one recommendation left to, to complete on there with recommendation four. And again, this is um, the timetable for late 2019, so that's going to be sitting in this for some time. Um, then to uh, assignment 21, can DDC do more to support case of homelessness in the district? Um, we've um, a little updates in, in commentary on that as opposed to um, uh, actions being signed off. Um, recommendation 2, um, there's an update in the commentary there. Um, and let me know what's, what's going on with that. Um, but the uh, action itself is not due until November next year. And recommendation 5, again, there's an update in the commentary there in terms of the work that um, we're doing with the knowledge from which that. And then finally, assignment 23, which um, is good for the task panel. She's waiting for um, the schedule for meetings, which will go to December Council. And then that will be uh, all decided. Uh, but there, there's a provisional schedule in place then. Okay. Um, has that been trepidated yet? I can't remember how it's uh, I don't think so. I think it will go out with papers for council. Uh, And uh, maybe I'll see how to respond Excellent. Um, then, I assume there weren't any uh, one year post No, there's nothing to do with it. Um, okay, um, I suppose until you go to business, uh, our final matter of the evening is uh, our next portfolio holder um, attendance. Um, Councillor uh, Morgan uh, and I did discuss uh, his potential attendance. Um, he's, uh, he was booked in the time in the last meeting or the one before and couldn't attend on that occasion, but he's expressed um, uh, a willingness and a desire to, to come along. And so I think after Councillor Miller's leader, uh, the resources for probably, probably um, the most relevant uh, if you exclude Councillor Guilford, who we've seen a couple of times recently. <laughs> so uh, maybe, maybe give her a message. So are we, are we happy to invite Yes, yeah. Councillor? Thank you. And if there's no urgent business, we'll bring that to a close. Thank you very much, everybody.